officially. The Honourable Morris Williamson. Speaker, I too will be taking a split call with my colleague Jamie Lee Ross, a sort of the young and the vibrant versus the old and the boring. And, sir, and you, yeah, and, and members of the House will be forced to choose which one is which, sir. Sir, I want to first of all congratulate Louisa Wall for this bill. And I want to say, sir, that the good news about the years in this Parliament is you learn to deflect all of the dreadful uh, sort of fire and brimstone accusations that are going to happen, sir. I've had a reverend in my local electorate call, the gay onslaught will start the day after this bill is passed. Now, sir, we are really struggling to know what the gay onslaught will look like. We don't know if it'll come down the Pakaranga Highway as a series of troops or whether it'll be a gas that flows in over the electorate and locks us all in. I, I also, sir, had a Catholic priest tell me that I was supporting an unnatural act. I found that quite interesting coming from someone who's taken an oath of celibacy for his whole life. <laughs> I always thought celibacy, okay, we'll go with celibacy. Okay, I, I haven't done it, so I don't know what it's about. <laughs> I also had a letter telling me I would burn in the fires of hell for eternity, and that was a bad mistake because I've got a degree in physics. <laughs> I used the thermodynamic laws of, uh, of physics. I put in my body weight and my uh, humidity and so on. I assumed the furnace to be at 5,000 degrees and I will last for just on 2.1 seconds. <laughs> it's hardly eternity. What do you think? And some more disgusting claims about what adoption would be. Well, sir, I've got three fantastic adopted kids. I know how good adoption is and I found some of it just disgraceful. I found some of the bullying tactics really evil. And, sir, I gave up being scared of bullies when I was at primary school. However, a huge amount of the opposition was from moderates, from people who were concerned, who were seriously worried what this might do to the fabric of our society. I respect their concern. I respect their worry. They were worried about what it might do to their families and so on. Let me repeat to them now, sir. All we are doing with this bill is allowing two people who love each other to have that love recognised by way of marriage. That is all we are doing. We are not declaring nuclear war on a foreign state. We are not bringing a virus in that could wipe out our agriculture sector forever. We are allowing two people who love each other to have that recognised. And I can't see what's wrong with that for love nor money, sir. I just cannot. I cannot understand why someone would be opposed. I understand why people don't like what it is that others do. That's fine. We're all in that category. But I give a promise to those people who are opposed to this bill right now. I give you a watertight guaranteed promise. The sun will still rise tomorrow. Your teenage daughter will still argue back with you as if she knows everything. Your mortgage will not grow. You will not have skin diseases or rashes or toads in your bed, sir. The world will just carry on. So don't make this into a big deal. This is fantastic for the people it affects, but for the rest of us, life will go on. And finally, can I say, sir, one of the messages I had was that this bill was the cause of our drought. <laughs> this bill was the cause of our drought. Well, if any of you follow my Twitter account, you will see that in the Pakaranga electorate this morning, it was pouring with rain. <laughs> we have the most enormous big gay rainbow across my electorate. <laughs> It has to be a sign, sir. It has to be a sign. If you're a believer, it's certainly a sign. And can I finish for all those who are concerned about this with a quote from the Bible. It's Deuteronomy. I thought Deuteronomy was a cat out of cats, but never mind. It's Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 1, verse 29. Be ye not afraid.